In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these classic monster plushies. They're really cute and they're fun to play with and you can also give them as gifts for Halloween. I'm going to show you how to make the Frankenstein monster, but you can also do other variations as well. So I can also show you how to make the bride, mummy, and also Dracula. They're made with fleece bodies and used felt to decorate, but then I also use other things like buttons, rhinestones, and ribbons also to help as well. So let's get started. In order to make the classic monster plushie, you're gonna need the following items. You're gonna need some fleece for the monster body, and you don't really need that much. The pattern piece is actually five and a half by five inches, and you need to cut out two of these. So you just need a piece that's big enough for that. Then if you're doing the Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, and Dracula, you're gonna need some assorted uh, felt here, and I'm using wool felt. This is for the hair, the outfit, and whatever else you wanna do. If you're doing the mummy, then you just need about a quarter of a yard of cotton fabric or some sort of fabric that tends to fray because we're gonna be cutting this into strips in order to make the outfit for the mummy. You're gonna need the pattern pieces, which you can get online, and they're marked with which monster they go. Too. So in case of the outfit, it's going to say Frank, Bride, and Dracula because you can use it for all three of those. So you just want to keep an eye on that for whatever one you want to do. You also need some buttons. And the size doesn't really matter. It's whatever you prefer, but I'm using half-inch buttons and you need two of those because that's the eyes. Embroidery floss in order to stitch onto our creature's face. Then you're going to need some polyester stuffing, some fabric glue, pins and needles, thread, scissors, fabric marker, and sewing gauge. So now we're going to show what you need to cut out of each thing. For all the monsters, you're going to need to cut out two of the body pieces here, I have the pattern, in your fleece because they all have a fleece body. So I'm just using scrap fleeces that I have here. I have two stack on top of each other because again, you don't really need that much. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this and cut it out. And then we're gonna move on to the pieces that we need in the felt. Out of the felt, you're gonna cut out the body for again, the Frankenstein, Bride, and Dracula. You need to cut out two of these and I'm just using black and I have it folded in half. And then also we have the hair. And again, this is only for Frankenstein, Bride, and Dracula. The mummy does not have hair or an outfit. You're gonna cut out two of this. So this one right here is for the Frankenstein creature. If you were doing the bride, you would cut out this one. And if you were doing Dracula, you would cut out this one. So since I'm doing Frankenstein, I'm gonna do this hair. And then you're just also gonna cut out any little accessory pieces. So right here, I'm using the gray for this piece here, which is just marked for an F for Frankenstein, this is the bolts that, in it, that are in his neck. Um, then you also have red for the bride for her lips, and then Dracula for any accessories you wanna do, such as the cape or his little tie. So I'm gonna cut these out, and then we're gonna start with decorating our outfit and starting to stitch it onto our creature. We're next gonna be focusing on the outfit of the creature. So here I have one of my outfits. Remember we cut out two, but I'm just gonna use one. And this is the fun part. We get to decorate it however we wish. So you can stitch it, you can use fabric glue to glue stuff, you can do rhinestones, whatever you wanna do. I have an example here of this Frankenstein monster I stitched on candy. So in this case, I would use my fabric marker to write on or draw whatever I want, and then I just follow along with my thread and needle. If I wanted to do something else, I have this example, and I just use my fabric glue to glue on these little rhinestones, and I cut out a square and made like a patch here. And the thing is that you have to remember is you don't wanna to do too close to the edge because this gets stitched into our seam right along the sides here above the arms and then below the arms and sometimes even in the legs if it's one of the male creatures. So in cases like that, you definitely wanna be careful because we don't wanna take the chance and accidentally sew over the rhinestones because it happens to be too close to the edge. And also if you wanted to do something in the hair, like I put this little flower here, you would do the same exact thing that we're doing with this outfit. Just cut out a flower and then glue or stitch it onto the corner here. As far as for the sides here, I would wait and do that at the end after this is sewn and stuffed because it goes over the side seam. 
and that's going to be a little bit difficult if you do it beforehand. But this is okay and definitely doing anything here is okay. On our Dracula, you see I did a little tie here. So I glued the circle and then a long strip for the tie and then glued on a little rhinestone. So definitely open to all different kinds of possibilities. In this case here, I have um, a little candy corn applique that I made. And usually with the stuff that are smaller, I kind of like to use the, the fabric glue to glue it on just because it's a little easier. So I'm just gonna put some glue on the back and then press it here in the middle and let that dry for a few seconds. So once that's done and I'm like, okay, that's what I wanna do to decorate my little outfit for my creature, I'm gonna start stitching it onto the body along with the hair. So we're gonna move on to that next because that's gonna involve some sewing. The next step is we're gonna take our outfit and our hair and place them on the body. So I'm gonna put this on this part, trying to match it up as best I can, and then the hair goes on the top, depending on what creature you're doing. So the thing is, for this part, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to placement. So since this is the Frankenstein, we want it to look like he has pants. So we wanna make sure that the bottom of this is at least between one eighth and one quarter away from this point right here between the legs. Because when we eventually place the back with the front of the body, we're gonna be stitching a quarter of an inch seam allowance and we wanna catch this point here because then once we flip it right side out, it's gonna look like he has pants. Now for the Bride of Frankenstein, we want that to look like a dress. So if you place this and it's still falling within that mark, you can go ahead and take your scissors and just trim a little bit off the bottom here. That's what I did with mine because I wanted to make sure that it did not get caught down here and it was open like a dress. So once we have the placement, you're gonna pin it and you're gonna do it both for the front of the body and also for the back, which I've already done here and I've already pinned it. We're gonna get a little closer so I can show you how to do the running stitch in order to attach these pieces to the body. To attach the outfit and the hair and any accessory pieces that you wish to stitch on instead of glue, we're gonna use the running stitch. I already have some embroidery floss on my needle and I'm using two strands of that and it's knotted and I'm coming from underneath along the edge and coming up and then going down a little ways away from where I came up. And then a little ways from that, I come up again and then go back down. And I'm gonna do this around the whole outfit and the whole perimeter of the hair or any accessory pieces. You can also do this on your sewing machine, just do a basting stitch if you prefer. Um, I just kind of like the handmade look, so I like to do it by hand. And some of this is gonna fall within the seam allowance, so you won't even see it, um, especially on the, the side here. But I mean, it's also good to do the stitch, just to tack it down. So you can take the pins out and you can continue working with it without worrying about it moving before you're ready to sew it. So that's why I just go ahead and do it all the way around. The other thing is for the Frankenstein and the Dracula, um, like I said, you go all the way around. For the Bride of Frankenstein, if you want to tack it down, you can, but I normally just leave under here open again so it looks more like a dress. So that's the only adjustment you have to make if you're doing the Bride, whoops, the Bride doll instead of the Frankenstein or the Dracula. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this. And next I'm gonna show you how you would do it differently if you were making the mummy instead. If you're going to do the mummy, what you're gonna to need to do is take your cut cotton and cut it into strips. And they don't need to be perfect strips or the same length because he's wrapped in rags, so they're not supposed to be perfect anyways. Once you have your strips, you're going to then lay it across the body any direction that you want, and you're gonna baste stitch right down the center of the strip. 
Once you're done with that, you can just cut off the extra on the sides here. Now you can either do this on your sewing machine, which I like to do since there's quite a few strips and I like to do it quickly, or you can just do it by hand using the running stitch. So once you're done with that one, you then lay your next strip and stitch right down the center of that and then do another one. Now if this was the front, you would need to make sure that you leave space for the eyes and the mouth. I have my example right here. So you can either do a triangle like I did, which is something like this, or you can do something in this fashion, just as long as you have enough room for the button eyes and the mouth. If this was the back, of course you can just cover the whole thing. So here's the back of him, and you'll see that at some points I've just left openings because I kind of like the way it looks. And after a while, this type of fabric would start to fray, which I think gives it a nice little rag mummy look. So once you've finished with that, and you've stitched them all down, and you've cut off the ends here, you then move on to the next phase, which we're going to be attaching the eyes and making the mouth, which I'm going to demonstrate on the Frankenstein creature. In the next step, we're gonna start creating the face for our creatures. So I have my buttons, and I'm just gonna place them temporarily right here. Now you can put the buttons anywhere that you wish. It's your character, you get to create the look. For the Frankenstein, I tend to put it a little bit lower than my other creatures, only because I wanna make sure I have room to put his stitches along the top of his head. Once I have the eyes around where I want them, I'm then gonna draw my smile with my fabric marker. So now I have something to follow for when I stitch my smile. But first I'm gonna sew on my buttons. So we're gonna get a little closer and I'm gonna do one at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. And when I'm getting ready to sew this button, I'm just gonna hold it with my finger like this so I can keep it in place because that's where I want it. So we'll get a little closer so we can show you how to sew the button on. So to do the eye, I'm also gonna get my double-stranded embroidery floss. I'm gonna come up from underneath and get in one of the holes. I right am the bottom left corner. I come up, so I'm making sure that the knot is underneath on the wrong side. And then I'm gonna go diagonally to this hole up here. Go back in. And I'm gonna try to get it in the hole that was right next to it. There we are. And then go diagonally the other direction. So I'm going to do this twice. And then you would do the same with the other button, tying a knot behind each eye. Now the only variation on this is for the bride. I also did little eyelashes on top of the eye just to give it a more girly look which I'll show you how I did that. All right, so that's pretty secure. At that point, if I'm doing one of the milk creatures, I can stop at that point and tie a knot. Just for the eyelash, I start really close to my button edge. You can even do a little bit in and then come out like that. And then just do a single stitch down a little ways on top. And then I would just do a series of these, maybe five, just to create that little girly look. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other eye and then we're gonna work on sewing the smile. For the mouth, I'm gonna be doing a type of back stitch. So again, I'm gonna get my double threaded embroidery floss and I'm gonna come up, not at the edge of my mouth, but just a little bit into it because I'm gonna be moving backwards. So again, I'm caught from underneath so my knot is on the back. And now I'm going to put the stitch right at the edge of where my mouth is. And then I'm going to come up just in front of that previous stitch. And I'm not going to go to the edge of the stitch. I'm going to go a little bit into it and go back down. So then come up in front of that stitch a little bit. And 
and then go into the previous stitch a little bit away from the end of it. So for this mouth, I do this for the Frankenstein creature and also for the mummy. For the bride, I have the lips, which you can do, or you can do a mouth like this. And for Dracula, I just do a straight line. And then I cut out two little white triangles in order to create the teeth, which you can then stitch on or you can glue on. So, so many ways to do little variations, but it's all the same process. If you do the little lips for the Bride of Frankenstein, you can glue on or you can do the running stitch in order to stick that on. I like the lips. I think that looks really cute. So I'm just going to finish up doing this mouth and then we're going to work on the top, making the stitches for the top of the Frankenstein head. The next step is we're going to do the stitches for the top of his forehead. So again, all I'm going to do is take my fabric marker and I'm going to draw a line. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So the nice thing about making Frankenstein is he's stitched together, so I'm sure he's not perfect either. Now the variation. We have the bride. She has the stitches on her neck. So in that case, I would draw the line down here. You can also do this on the back of his head if you want it to continue over, but I'm just going to do the front. So once I have the line, I'm going to go ahead and grab my embroidery floss again, and I'm going to do a running stitch across from this side to this side. I've already started my running stitch along here at the top. So again, you're just going to come up and then go down, up and then down. Once we get to the end here, I'm then going to start doing some vertical stitches just to create that Frankenstein stitch look. And it doesn't have to be perfect and there's no certain order. I just randomly, like I'll start here above my stitch line and then I'll come down below it. And then maybe I'll do one right here and then come back up above the stitch line and go down. So just like that. So I'm just going to do this along the whole length of this. And then once we're done with this, we can move on to the next step. Once you've decided that you're done decorating your creature, what you're going to do is you're going to take your back and your front and you're going to put them right side to right side and then start pinning them. But the thing is with the Frankenstein we need the neck bolts so that's what we have these felt pieces for. And you're going to place them right above the arms so in the T shape the top of the T goes towards the inside. So I'm going to put that one right there just like that. So now at this point you would put your back on top of your front and you're definitely going to stick some straight pins right in that spot where the bolt is because we don't want those to shift before we get a chance to stitch them down. Because the next step now is we're going to sew the quarter inch seam allowance around the perimeter of our creature. Now the thing is also you have to remember to keep an opening so that you can flip this right side out when you finish stitching it. So I would make that opening above the area of the bolt. So any place above here and just make sure it's big enough so you can stick your fingers in and then flip the thing right side out. Now you can do it on the side or do it on the top. It's a little easier to do it on the top because it's a flatter area. So then when we do the slip stitch to close it, it just makes it a little bit more clean looking. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my pins in and then go to the machine so I can go ahead and sew this. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can still participate. I would just keep them with the right sides facing out. So the opposite of this, make sure that your bolts are between them with the T sticking out and then do a whip stitch all the way around. If you don't know how to do a whip stitch, we have a video on our website which shows you how to do it. I'm going to do it on the sewing machine. So I'm just going to do a regular stitch at my quarter inch seam allowance all the way around making sure to leave an opening. For those doing it by hand, you also want to leave an opening 
that's big enough for you to stick the stuffing in. I'm going to go ahead and stitch this at the quarter inch seam allowance and I usually use my pins to form an X where I'm going to start sewing and where I'm going to stop so that way I can remember where I'm keeping my opening. So between the two X's there's no stitches so I start at this X, stitch all the way around and then stop when I get to the other X. It's just good to remind myself. And some parts of this is pretty curvy so I would definitely take your time. I still have to take my time. I want it to look neat and definitely do some back stitches and then just slowly make your way around your monster. See now I'm getting to the arm. I can try to slightly curve. If I start getting off I'm just going to lift this and turn it. and try to fall along the shape of the arm. Lift it, turn it, and so on. So you're definitely going to be doing this for both the arms and for the legs. We're next going to be clipping our curve so then we can flip it right side out and then start the fun part of stuffing it. Once I finish stitching around the whole thing, I'm then going to cut out these notches all along the whole thing. This is just to help because it's so curvy and so the seams won't pucker as much. Not that it really matters since we're filling it with stuffing, but I always like doing it anyways because it makes the seam look neater. So all you have to do is be careful not to cut into your stitches. So you just cut out a little triangle all along the outside of your stitching. Now the areas where you have the hair and the outfit and it's a little bit thicker, I'm going to turn it this way, um, because it's so thick, it's going to be hard to cut through with one take. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it separately, turn this around this way. So I just have the fleece and felt of the top layer and then I just do it for the one that's underneath. It just makes it a little bit easier on the hands to split the difference and do them separately, even though it takes a little bit longer. Just be really careful not to cut your stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way around for my whole thing. And then once I'm done, I'm going to find my little opening here that I left. And I'm going to flip the whole thing right side out using my thumbs to sort of push it through the hole. So I'm going to go ahead, finish clipping my notches. I'm going to turn the whole thing right side out and then we're going to get to the part which is stuffing our creature. To begin stuffing your creature, you're just going to take a little bit of stuffing. You don't want to try to do too much at one time. Stick it in your hole. And then you're going to push it down to the opposite end of where your opening is. So in my case, it's going to be the legs. Make sure it gets all the way down there. And then you're going to keep doing this until you have your creature as full as you would like. I like mine pretty firm, so I'm going to stick quite a bit of stuffing in there. But if you want it softer, you can go ahead and do it softer. So once this has been stuffed, we're then going to pin our opening close and do a slip stitch. After you finish stuffing it, you're then going to take your opening and you're going to fold in the edges so now you can create a more clean looking surface right here. I'm just going to turn this over to the side. So you can see this is all folded in and what we're going to do is a slip stitch in order to sew this opening close. So we're going to get a little closer so I can show you how to do that stitch. To do a slip stitch to close up my opening here, I'm going to need my needle threaded with some thread here and knotted on the end. And here I have the start of my opening right here. And I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go on the inside of one of these folds here. Just grab a little bit of fabric. I'm going to pull it through. And kind of push my knot to the inside so it's more hidden. And then 
now that I started on the top, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of fabric on the bottom here. Pull it through and then pull it tight, but not too tight. And as we sew, it's going to start to close and you wanna keep your stitches pretty small and pretty close together. I don't wanna need to do big stitches because then it'll be more of a hole for your stuffing to start coming through. So now I'm at the top again. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit of the bottom. Just basically going back and forth between the two sides. When I get to the end, all I do is just tie a knot and then I'm done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish doing this the whole way. And at this point, after you finish doing the slip stitch, the Frankenstein creature is um, pretty much done but I will show you um, how to finish the bride and then also uh, Dracula in doing his cape. The last step then for the bride is you're going to cut out these little white shapes here for the side of her hair. And you don't have to, but I did get some of my gray thread again, and I just did some of those little squiggly lines using the back stitch, and then I glued those into place, just so she has that unique hair design we've all come to know and love. To finish up the mummy, I took a long strip of my white fabric again, and I tied it in a little knot on the side, so it looks like he was wrapped around with these rags, and then of course a little bow tie, because I like my creatures to be fancy. To make the Dracula cape, you're gonna cut out the shape of the cape, which we have a pattern for, and you're gonna take two pieces of ribbon, and this is quarter inch ribbon. You're gonna take the end of one ribbon, and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna do a couple of cross stitches, stitching it to this top edge of the cape. And then you're gonna take the other ribbon and do the same on this side. Once you've done that, it's complete, and all you have to do is just tie it onto the Dracula. And here we have the completed Frankenstein creature. So you can see he's adorable, but also it's a very versatile pattern. So you can make any monster of your heart's desire, or you can make something a little bit safer as well.